Well, hello, Eric. Blue Oyster Cult. It's really noisy in here, which is your band, isn't it? You're from Long Island. You've been here a long time. Tell us about 40 this years. Real, this is real rock and roll backstage with a, a band live on stage as we're doing this. Yeah, absolutely. But it's not loud enough yet because you're going to be louder. You were one of the loudest what? bands in the world. What do you think? I say it's all rock and roll. It sounds great having a band playing as we're doing this piece. Okay. And... Um, you sort of started that thing along with some other bands around dystopia and, and science fiction, all that. I mean, what was all that about? And you got this strange logo. Tell us about how that all came about. Well, look what you're wearing. I know. That's sort of like Oz turned upside down and inside out. And the music characterised by two guitars, uh, two main lead guitars anyway. I mean, how did you get that going? How did you come together in the first place? Very long story. Uh, I think we'll have to wait till Saxon and three other bands have finished before I can answer that. But actually, I met Buck in a music store in 1968, and um, now it's 43 years later. That's a hell of a time. Yeah. And this, this record here, it's got some of the longest songs known to man on it. I mean, I've had it for a long, long time, actually. Um, are you going to be doing any of these tonight? Um, yes. Which ones? We don't have really a lot of time to play today. I wish we had longer. But I guarantee we'll be back and do a nice long show. So have you got anything coming up for us in the UK? Are you planning to come back uh, and do some more work here? Um, well, that's. I wish it was up to me, but it's really up to agencies and business and stuff like that. Right, okay. But uh, but um, we'd love to come back and, uh, and do a, a real tour and um, and stretch out like we can we you know we do 99 percent of our work in the united states yeah and um but we'd like to come back and 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 do a two hour two hour and 20 minute show for our real hardcore fans and can you pick out one fascinating story humorous or otherwise that typifies how the band has sustained itself across that time one one sort of amusing rock and roll story <laughs> that's tellable well, I was just telling somebody about um, going to see Ronnie Dio play, may he rest oh, yeah. in peace. Uh, he was a good friend of mine. I was playing a fraternity party, which I don't know if your, your, your listeners or viewers would be familiar with uh, fraternity parties, but that's like a club inside of a college where a bunch of students get together and have a private house on campus. And uh, I went to see, I was playing in one where they have a private party and hire a band. It's just like the living room of a house, you have a band play for a party. And I went to go, I was playing in one, and Ronnie Dio was playing across the street. He had a band called Ronnie Dio and the Prophets. And I had my own band called Lost and Found. And um, my band finished playing one show. He did four sets a night. So I was finished with my second set, and I went across the street to watch Ronnie play. And this was about, probably in about 1967. I'm old, okay? So I went to see Ronnie play across the street. And Ronnie, of course, had 10 times the equipment my band had. And Ronnie was doing all of Tommy. And he had huge equipment in this living room, filled up the whole place. And then he did a whole set of Tom Jones. And, yes, he, was, and he was the bass player. And it was just, just totally blew me away. And um, uh, I love the guy. And uh, we all miss him. And uh, to quote Tom Jones, that is unusual, isn't it? I would have never have known that he was capable of that. He could do anything. The, the guy was a, a, a musical prodigy. Eric, live from hell, thank you very <laughs> much. Bye, everybody. <laughs>